AWS Networking Fundamentals VPCs and Subnets Let's kick things off with understanding what networks are and how they work. Networking is actually pretty relatable to the real world. Say that you have something that you want to send from your house to a friend's house. You get the thing, you hop on a bike and head to their home on paved roads. Then you make it to their home and you drop it off. This entire scene can be rebuilt to explain how networks work. Think of the thing you wanted to give to your friend as the data. Now think of the houses as the clients that are sending the data. The road is the network that allows you the data packet, which in our case is the courier, to move from one client to the next. So what is a VPC? Well, let's look at a very simplified definition of what a VPC is. A virtual private cloud or a VPC is a private subsection of AWS that you control into which you can place AWS resources, such as EC2 instances and databases, and you have full control over who has access to the AWS resources that you place inside your VPC. Amazon defines this as something a bit different. Amazon defines the AWS VPC as something that lets you provision a logically isolated section of the Amazon Web Services Cloud, where you can launch AWS resources in a virtual network that you define. You have complete control over the virtual networking environment, including selection of your own IP address range, the creation of subnets, and the configuration of route tables and network gateways. Here's a more visual representation of how a VPC can be explained. Think of a Twitter account, your own Twitter account. Now on your own Twitter account, you would have your own tweets, photos, and videos uploaded. Those are all your photos and videos. Only you have the ability to change who can see them, to take them down, to put them up, and so on and so forth. You don't have the ability, say for instance, to control what is on my Twitter. So you cannot control what photos and videos I put up on my Twitter and what I tweet. And you can control the photos and videos uploaded to somebody else's Twitter or what tweets they're going to make. The same can be applied to your VPC in the AWS cloud. You can have your own EC2 and RDS and other resources within your own VPC and you can control those resources infinitely to the absolute maximum of your controls within your VPC. But you cannot control what is in, say, somebody else's VPC or my VPC. And that's just how VPC works. It's your own private space and the resources within that space are yours to do with whatever you please. So what is a subnet? Well, a subnet, which is shorthand for a subnetwork, is a subsection of a network. Generally, a subnet includes all of the computers in a specific location. Continuing with the neighborhood analogy, where houses represent computers, all houses on the same street in a neighborhood would be a subnet. There are two types of subnets that you will see, public subnets and private subnets. We will be looking at these more in detail later down the road. These are what public and private subnets look like. The instances in the public subnet can send outbound traffic directly to the internet, whereas the instances in the private subnet cannot. Instead, the instances in the private subnet can access the internet by using a network address translation or a NAT gateway that resides in the public subnet. When you create a VPC, you also define an IP address range that the VPC can use. And this is done in the form of a CIDR block, which stands for Classless Interdomain Routing. An IP address is used to identify resources over a network. There are two types of IP addresses that you will find. One is public and the other one is private. Your public IP address is the one that is accessible via the internet. It is your unique IP across the globe. Private IPs are the ones that are used within local networks for identification of resources locally. Beyond that, there's different protocols, IPv4, and IPv6. Amazon VPC supports both the IPv4 and IPv6 addressing protocols. By default, Amazon VPC uses the IPv4 addressing protocol. You can't disable this behavior. When you create a VPC, you must specify an IPv4 CIDR block, which is a range of private IPv4 addresses. You can optionally assign an IPv6 CIDR block to your VPC and assign IPv6 addresses from that block to instances in your subnet. Classless interdomain routing, or CIDR notations, are used to denote the size of your VPC. 
AWS allows you to specify a CIDR block between forward slash 16 and forward slash 28. The largest, forward slash 16, provides you with 65,536 IP addresses. And the smallest possible allowed CIDR block, which is forward slash 28, provides you with 16 IP addresses. It should be noted that the first four IP addresses and the last IP address in each subnet CIDR block are not available for you to use and cannot be assigned to an instance. Carrying forward the same visual as we had the last time, now we can take a look at how IP addressing works within VPCs. So your compute instance within your subnet is going to have these two IP addresses. The first one is going to be the private IP address for addressing from within the subnet, and then it's going to be the public IP address, which is the one that you're actually going to ping from the internet to access your compute instance. Now let's take a look at internet gateways. An internet gateway is a horizontally scaled, redundant, and highly available VPC component that allows communication between your VPC and the internet. An internet gateway enables resources like EC2 instances in your public subnets to connect to the internet if the resource has a public IPv4 address or an IPv6 address. Similarly, resources on the internet can initiate a connection to resources in your subnet using the public IPv4 address or IPv6 address. For example, an internet gateway enables you to connect to an EC2 instance in AWS using your local computer. An internet gateway serves two purposes, to provide a target in your VPC route tables for internet routable traffic and to perform network address translation for instances that have been assigned public IPv4 addresses. An internet gateway supports IPv4 and IPv6 traffic. It does not cause availability risks or bandwidth constraints on your network traffic. There's no additional charge for having an internet gateway in your account. It's time to explore NAT gateways. NAT stands for Network Address Translation. NAT is designed for IP address conversion. It enables private IP networks that use unregistered IP addresses to connect to the internet. Let's take one familiar example. In any residential society or commercial place, there will be an entrance gate and a watchman. A new person entering inside premise will not know anything about inside members, like where to go, etc. This watchman also keeps watch on all objects coming inside and allows only authorized persons inside. Similar to the entrance of your premise, NAT is the entrance to your VPC, and it should be public facing to monitor all incoming objects. So it allows only authorized access to internal private EC2s or other systems. NAT Gateway is a highly available gateway that allows you to have your private subnet communicate to the internet without becoming public. When you make a VPC, you get a route table with it. But what is a route table? A route table contains a set of rules called routes that determine where network traffic from your subnet or gateway is directed. Your VPC has an implicit router, and you use route tables to control where network traffic is directed. Each subnet in your VPC must be associated with a route table, which controls the routing for the subnet. We call that a subnet route table. You can explicitly associate a subnet with a particular route table. Otherwise, the subnet is implicitly associated with the main route table. A subnet can only be associated with one route table at a time, but you can associate multiple subnets with the same subnet route table. When you set up subnets inside your VPC, you have to set them up in particular availability zones. But what are availability zones? Well, these are distinct locations within an AWS region that are engineered to be isolated from failures in other availability zones. They provide inexpensive, low latency network connectivity to other availability zones in the same AWS region. Network Access Control Lists A Network Access Control List, or an ACL as we like to call it, is an optional layer of security for your VPC that acts as a firewall for controlling traffic in and out of one or more subnets. You might set up network ACLs with rules similar to your security groups in order to add an additional layer of security to your VPC. Your VPC automatically comes with a modifiable default network ACL. By default, it allows all inbound and outbound IPv4 traffic and, if applicable, IPv6 traffic. 
The default network ACL is configured to allow traffic to flow in and out of the subnets with which it is associated. Each network ACL also includes a rule whose rule number is an asterisk. This rule ensures that if a packet doesn't match any of the other numbered rules, it is denied. You can't modify this rule or even remove it. This is an example of a default network ACL for a VPC that supports IPv4 only. This can be modified to allow other types of traffic as well. AWS provides a number of networking services to its customers. These are all of the networking services that you can use with your AWS account. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can set up VPCs in AWS and how then we can connect those VPCs to the internet. So to start off, let's get a visual representation of our AWS cloud. Now, any and all resources we want to deploy within our AWS, we can do so in our AWS cloud. This is our entire AWS environment. So let's set up a VPC within this environment. So now we have a VPC ready to go within our AWS cloud. Now, within a VPC, we're going to need availability zones to dictate where our subnets are going to be and where we can set up our EC2s. So let's take two availability zones, for example, to work with for this demo. So let's get US East 1A and US East 1B. So we have these two availability zones that affect our VPC. Now, once we have our availability zones decided, we can make our subnets. So we can have two public subnets and two private subnets. So all in all, we have four subnets now within a single VPC. Now, when you set up your subnets, you're actually going to get route tables with these subnets. But for the sake of simplicity, we're only going to be showing one route table, which is good enough. Okay, so now that we have our subnets and our route tables, it's also time to create NAT gateways. The reason we're going to need NAT gateways is because if we want our private subnets to communicate to the internet, we're going to need these. And I'll be showing you later on how the private subnet actually works and communicates to the internet using the NAT gateways. So now that we have our NAT gateway set up, it is time to set up our EC2 instances. So let's say we have a single EC2 instance within each subnet. So we have one compute resource set up within both of our public subnets and one compute resource set up within both of our private subnets. So now that that's done, let's look at how this communication is going to occur. So each subnet is going to communicate directly to a route table. That's fair enough. So from a public subnet, the EC2 instance can just communicate directly to the route table. There's no problems there. However, if the private subnet wanted to communicate with the route table, it couldn't do so directly. The problem with that being that the private IPs just can't communicate to the route table directly. So for that translation, they need to communicate first to the NAT gateway which will then communicate to the route table for them. So once all of our subnets are communicating to the route table, the route table will then communicate to the internet gateway. And the internet gateway from that point onwards connects to the internet. This was a simple explanation of how you can see VPCs working in the AWS cloud.